Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we have seen 1G and 2G technologies and corresponds to that GSM communication and the GSM architecture we have discussed. In this video, let us get into the next topic that is third generation technology, high level architecture of LTE, fourth generation that is called as 4G technology and then wireless LAN that is local area network and Bluetooth are going to be discussed. So as we know, in 1G we have only analog voice and then 2G we have seen we can transmit a text also. That is what through the SMS we can transmit the text that is provided in 2G. Now in 3G it is an high speed connection where video calling and uh, internet is evolved here with a high speed network. So it is allowed to play online games also. So then we need to understand what is 4G that is very much faster compared to 3G where full HD versions of videos are coming come into picture and also live streamings and very much smooth in the live streaming also we have observed. And then in 5G we have a very high speed again compared to 4G with 30 gigahertz available spectrum which is more connection density 10 times than in 4G. So this is what the brief introduction to the generations of wireless communication. Let us understand 3G. The third generation system which supports a high speed packet switch data. This is very important here we need to understand in 3G. A high speed packet switch data is introduced in third generation which goes up to 2 Mbps which is very less in 2G. We are able to achieve 2 Mbps of data transmission in 3G. 2G we have GPRS that is considered to be a transition step here from 2G to 3G. So 3G systems are adopted worldwide. So since the speed is increased here in 3G compared to 2G the data transmission is achieved higher data rate with 2 Mbps that is 2 MB per second data transmission. So it is accepted worldwide and subscriber is able to get the mobile service from anywhere in the world means that is roaming. Global roaming is provided here wherever the user is he can access to the network. So the two networks in 3G it is named as UMTS and CDMA. UMTS stands for Universal Mobile Telecommunication System and CDMA uses uh, Code Division Multiple Access Technique. CDMA 2000 is the name they have given. And what is CDMA technology? As we know, we have seen in the previous video that is FDMA and TDMA. These two are the techniques used in 2G and 2.5G. Now it is improved to 3G where in 3G CDMA is used. In frequency division multiple access we know that different frequencies are going to be allocated. In TDMA different times are going to be allocated. In CDMA in a same channel different codes are going to be allocated. The coding methods are going to be introduced in CDMA. This is what the multiple access technique used in 3G. So error control coding is easy here. Spreading of the spectrum, better utilization of a bandwidth, soft handoff, strict power control mechanisms and quality of voice is very much improved here and less multipath fading problems occurred in 3G that is in CDMA technology. So here capacity is the main aspect, capacity is increased, capacity in the sense it is the bits per second. So here C is the channel capacity in bits per second, it is given as B log to base 2 1 plus SINR. Here B is the bandwidth and SINR in the sense it is signal to interference plus noise ratio. This is how we can calculate the capacity of the mobile telephone system in 3G. Then what are the goals of 3G? It is it is allow both digital data as well as the voice communication. Means if we move on to 3G it will support whatever the facilities given by 2G and 1G also. In 1G only we have voice and then in 2G we have SMS facility also. In 3G this is going to happen in data with respect to the data transmission. So voice communication and digital data is going to be allowed in 3G and also it facilitates universal personal communication like, like global roaming and then uh, listening to the music, watching movie, access internet, video conference. So all these can be done in 3G. And then UMTS. UMTS is the another uh, technology here in uh, 3G. Uh, Universal Mobile Telecommunication Service is the main technology here in uh, 3G. You can see the architectural block diagram. 
this consisting of a mobile station obviously the first user end is a mobile station then we will be having generally what we call in 2g it is base station base station connected to msc like that similarly here we have nodes node b we are going to call this is a base station and then we have rns that is radio network controller here in uh, 3g we are calling it as rns it is same as bts base transceiver system in 2g we can relate this rns to that number of rns number of transceiver sections are connected together to a utran that is universal terrestrial radio access network which is consisting of multiple radio network subsystems that is rnss so which can be related to bss that is base switching system or base station subsystem what we say in 2g then it is connected to a packet switched domain and a circuit switched domain in a circuit switched domain we will be having connected to circuit switched network that is a point to point communication network that will happen through msc and gmsc and this packet switched domain which will be carrying in terms of the data will be having sgsn and then ggsn that is connected to the ims which will have a ip network connected means here SGSN in the sense it is the node that serving the mobile station where it supports uh, GPRS as well as UMTS services. GGSN is that gateway GPRS supports. The, it is a part of the core network again consisting of G, GSM based 3G networks to the internet. So these two are responsible for connecting the internet or the data to the rest of the network we can say. Then we have a architecture where it is evolved from 2G, then 3G, then to LTE. We need to understand the high level architecture of LTE, what it has. In this figure, you can see, this is a PSTN connected to the core network. The core network will be having a circuit switcher domain as well as the packet switcher domain, as we seen in uh, 3G architecture. Similarly, it is again connected to the user end module that is called as uh, the mobile or the mobile handset. So this is this core network is changed to EPC, EPC in the sense evolved packet core. This will be an replacement where packet switcher network is replaced by EPC. And this packet network is replaced, but the circuit switcher domain, there is no equivalent for that. There will be a circuit switcher domain here also. And the evolved UMTS terrestrial uh, radio access network that is EUTRN that handles the EPC's radio communication with the mobile. Uh, this is a direct replacement for UTRAN. So e UTRAN is replaced by EUTRAN, that is what ha that handles this EPC in between the mobile and the server PDNs. And here, this user equipment, UE is a user equipment that is a mobile phone. If you observe the mobile phone, it, it will look similar, but inside the equipment there are major changes happen to support the higher end system that is LTE. What is EUTARN then? It is Evolved UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access Network. It is the air interface in the LTE cellular network. Similarly here GERAN that is GSM 8G Radio Access Network is the 2G air interface you can see and similarly UTRAN is the interface in the 3G and in 4G we will be having E UTRAN that is evolved UMTS terrestrial radio access network that supports that uses OFDMA modulation that is orthogonal frequency division multiple access technique for the downlink and SSE FDMA for the uplink. This is what about the evolution from GSM and then UMTS to LTE. GSM it is with respect to 2G, UMTS with respect to 3G and LTE what we call it as 4G. Then fourth generation technology. This fourth generation technology uh, gives us the speed in the internet access, improved speed we can say, reduced latency, there is no delay we can say and then crystal clear voice calls. Voice calls are very much clear in 4G technique. There are two categories here again, the technologies we say, one is the WiMAX, another one is LTE. This WiMAX is the announcement of previous fixed wireless standard for mobility and this LTE that is the third generation partnership project that is uh, called as 3GPP 
and what are all the advantages in 4G? 4G are wireless high data applications to include multimedia uh, consumption such as video, audio streaming, video gaming and then video conferencing is very much improved here in 4G using mobile devices as well as cloud computing applications and in 4G we have high spectral efficiency, reduced cost per bit and then increase service by increasing the efficiency, open interfaces, power efficiency and flexible usage of frequency bands. These are the facilities to get in this 4G technology. Then we have LTE's system architecture. Basically, it will be having EUTRAN. This is a radio access network we have. And we have a mobile station that will be called as user equipment. This is a mobile phone that is connected to E node B. This E node B's are generally which we refer to the GSM as base stations or base transceiver systems and uh, BSS. That is what here it is represented as E node B. And the core network here will be having EPC that consisting of EPDG, PCRF, SWG. Let us see what are all these in EPC. So PDN is a packet data network. GW indicates it is a gateway. Here you can see we will be having PDN, GW. This is packet data network gateway. What it is going to do? It communicates with the outside world, serving the gateway acts as a router. This gateway will be called as a router that forwards the data between the base station and the PDN gateway. This communicates the data between the base station as well as the PDN gateway. Then we will be having one more device called MME that is uh, a part of EPC that is Mobility Management Entity. We have seen Mobility Management again in 2G. This controls the user equipment identity and then authentication and it is going to track where actually the user is. It tracks the user across the network where actually it is. And then we have one more uh, block called HSS that is Home Subscriber Server. The main user database used within one single node which manages the customer in real time. That is what HSS is. Here HSS is Home Subscriber Server. Home uh, similarly it is HLR in uh, uh, 2G we have. This is the main user database. The database consisting of the information of a user with within one single node which manages the customer in real time. This is what HSS is. And then we have one more called uh, PCRF that is policy control and uh, charging rules function. Uh, this is what a software, this is actually a software node designated in a real time to determine the policy rules. That is what uh, to make the decision on the multimedia network uh, which is which plays a key role in Vivo LTE as a mediator of network resources offering the personalized data plans. Regarding data plans, we know that the charging and all will be maintained by PCRF. Then the next concept is wireless LAN, that is wireless local area network. Here it is named as WLAN. Here W stands for wireless and LAN stands for local area network. This is again a method of connecting the two or more devices together. In the wired LAN, what we are going to do? We are going to connect the devices through a wired connection that will be called as LAN, local area network. Here in the LAN, we will be having a wireless connectivity. The wireless local area network says it is going to connect the two or more devices together within a single organization, we can say, within a single building, we can say. So they are connected through a wireless communication method. To connect through a wireless communication method, we will be having an access point that is AP that can be uh, called as a router and it is connected to an Ethernet switch and then to the internet. This access point connects all the users together in a network that will be called as wireless LAN. There are different standards here. You can see 802.11, 802.11a, 802.11b and then 802.11g. These are the different uh, WLAN IEEE standards which will be having different frequency bands and the bandwidths also you can see and the modulation types they are, they are going to use and the data rate is increasing. So these are the different IEEE standards which is evolved in WLAN. What are all the advantages of wireless LAN over wired LAN? In a wired LAN, we will be having a wired connection between the devices. 
So there is a physical wire between the two devices. If there is device A and device B are in connected, there should be a physical connection between these two in wired LAN. This is not required in wireless LAN. These two are going to be connected wirelessly. And there is no physical wires. It is easy to install. Adding and remove the workstation is very simple here. And it provides high data rate compared to the wired LAN since the small area it is going to cover wirelessly. And move workstation while maintaining the connectivity it is possible. And it is economical compared to the wired LAN since small area access is there. These are the different advantages of wireless LAN compared to wired LAN. And then Bluetooth. Again Bluetooth is a wireless technology as we know. We can use Bluetooth to connect a mobile phone to a system, mobile phone to a audio system and to a printer. So this Bluetooth used for exchanging the data between fixed as well as mobile devices during the short distances. So short distance communication can be achieved using this Bluetooth wireless technology. This operates in the band of 2.4 gigahertz and it can connect seven devices at a time. In the same time, we can connect seven devices. So you can see here, if this is a system which is connecting different uh, devices together, at a time, it can connect up to seven devices. And what is the range of the distance between these two in a Bluetooth connectivity means? It is up to 10 meters. It will support up to 10 meters. And it provides the data rate up to 1 Mbps or 3 Mbps depending on the version of the Bluetooth we are going to use. And it allows communicating voice and the text information between the several devices in a real time. And Bluetooth is a small microchip that operates in the band of available frequency throughout the world uh, in the same uh, frequency throughout the world and communication can realize point to point and point to multi point also you can see here if this is a device connecting to all the sub devices this will be act as a master and these will be act as a slave something like that we can understand the point to multi point connection in bluetooth and the connections how actually it will be in the bluetooth means we can categorize it into Pico net connection and a scatter net connection. What do you mean by Pico net means a Bluetooth network which is called as Pico net and a connection of interconnected Pico nets is called as scatter net. If this is system A, it is connected to system 1, 2, 3, 4. This kind of connection will be called as Pico net. One device will be having a connectivity with all different devices. This is Pico net. And if a part of one network, will be a part of other network also. Uh, here is the shared network we can say. This device is sharing between the two networks. This will be called as scatter network. And these Pico nets are small Bluetooth networks framed at most eight stations, one of which will be the master. That's why here I said there are seven connected devices. So this is a master and seven connected devices can be connected to this particular master. Totally there are eight stations so one becomes a master the center one becomes a master and other devices becomes a slave here the master node is the primary station that manages the small network the slave stations are secondary stations that are synchronized with the primary so whatever the data transfer happens it should be synchronized means a master it is connecting to the all slaves will be synchronized with the all slaves we can say master and slaves are going to be synchronized this will be called as a primary network, primary device, and these are called as the secondary devices. This is what the Bluetooth is. Here you can see the Pico net, two Pico nets, and this laptop will be acting as a slave for this master as well as for this master. So we can call this as a scatter net. In the next video, let us see the satellite communication, how actually the satellite communication is going to happen, and let us understand the uplink as well as downlink in satellite communication in the similar way. Thank you.